The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. might have to turn me up there, I don't know. Or not, it you know, don't matter to me. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. Did you enjoy the worship? Yes. I think that, that just, in the, just in the last maybe three or four weeks that the Lord's been doing something really new. Um, with the with the addition with the of the small groups that that we've been studying for the past you know six six or so weeks, um, I think what he there there's a few things that stand out during these during these teachings and one of them is is I'm a big relationship guy I'm, a, I'm like a relationship fanatic as far as the re, the relationship between you and God and between us and the congregation and also families. So it's, it's really neat when, when God puts that, his finger on particular subjects that, 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 that hit home for me. And the small groups are, is one of them. And the accountability is like, is one of those things like he spoke to just a little bit ago. It's one of those things that is priority right now. And it's, and, and God creating these, these, um, micro churches or small groups or whatever you want to call them. there's a hundred ways to actually what to call them um, the accountability one to another is 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 a huge dynamic that's going to be involved in these and it's not to be scary but it's because it's a natural progression with a relationship that happens during the meetings there, there, there's going to be relationship and fellowship in these meetings and they're going to grow and you're going to learn to trust and, and so out of that outflow, um, it's, an, it's a natural progression. So one of those things in, in, the, in the relationship with, with people and the relationship with God, because you need both, you desperately need both. And our first and foremost ministry is to God. You know, I, I was like, I was looking at, um, I was actually, I was, I was at one of the tapings at Sid Roth, and we had a, they had a worship uh, person uh, come and, as a, as one of the people that they were doing the interview for, and one of the things that stood out for me that she said was, when when she does worship, she actually, she actually is 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 doing worship to well, Jesus as if he was standing here in front of her. And I think that that it, it, a perception. I know we always talk about Jesus in us and and everything like that, but when I'm up here. If I don't see if I don't see through the Jesus goggles, <laughs> I shouldn't be up here, you know. And and it's the same that goes for anybody that's that's preaching and teaching. It's if if you don't have the love, the love of God that changes your 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 view um, of what's going on, and you don't see through His eyes, um, you, you don't have any right. You don't have any right, you know, pulling the log out of other people's eyes. Some people have log vision, and and. And I don't want any part of that. And that's part of what the accountability is in the small groups is all about. Um, it also coheres, it, it, it has a cohesion um, in that openness that allows the Holy Spirit to continue to fill and flow in the relationship and in the, in the actual small group, in the church setting even. Um, What is when laid on our hearts, um, even just recently, I've had like several, like huge dynamic God dreams, and um, my wife and I have come to a, an agreement with them. But about, I want to say I can't remember when they asked us to do the, the sexual issues. One of the the, the local high schools asked us to do a sexual issues. Uh, module like we did here um, last September 
and, and break it down so that that would be useful for, for, for kids um, in the 10 to or 12 to graduating age. And um, at that point, we both were like, this is so necessary to get this stuff out. This is so necessary to get this out to the younger generation and other generations, period. And, and so that was our heart for a long time. It, it, it fell through because of time and, and the, the way that everything had to be rewritten and, and, and whatnot and other things came up. But at the same time, it's still our heart. And in the process of all these small groups happening, um, there was, a, a, and, and they'll talk about it probably next week, uh, Stina and my wife are, have started a, a women's ministry that's going to be meeting in, starting in September. And they'll give you the details on that. It, we had it up on the screen a couple times now, but to be prepared for that. But it's going to be a lot of teaching, and then there's going to be, a, there's going to be some really good fellowship time, just, you know, just coffee and, and get to know each other. Um, we saw a huge need for that. We saw a need that there, there, there needed to be that as a goal. Um, and it's also, it's merging of generations. We, we still believe in that, our hearts that, that that's key for right now. The other thing that's gonna be happening that's really exciting is that, that we're, um, after a lot of prayer and, and, and talking things through with leadership and things, uh, Gwen and I are gonna uh, start having um, our own meetings on Sunday afternoons at the other building. We're not separating, but this is, we also, we want other generations to be, it's gonna be geared towards other generations. It's gonna be geared towards more of the younger crowd with kids and, and whatnot. And it's just gonna be like a, a simple church, church, micro church meetings. And what's really cool about it is this isn't, we're not, we're not leaving the church. You're, we're gonna be here every Sunday. Um, this is a, like a bridge or an expansion. It's something that really has never, that churches, like they split and you see all that nasty stuff happen. This is, this is like an expansion of full stature in, in another, an and like a different arm, right? It's, it's gonna be used more like an outreach um, tool. This has no start date um, as of yet. But we felt really, we need to, we, we really feel that there needs to be an outreach. Um, it is so important. We believe in the, in the full stature approach and the deep relief now and, and all this because it's, a, it's just changed us from inside out like phenomenally. And we want, be, we want to be able to reach those, those kids. Um, kids meaning 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever, whoever wants to come. Whatever you see yourself as, <laughs> I suppose. Um, so that's exciting as well. Um, we're dealing a lot with, with the people from the online school around the, around the world, um, trying to break things down for millennials and other generations so that they understand that there's actually even a need to have a relationship with God. We know what's so sad. This is, this is why. This is one of the, my heart's desires is because there's generations out here that don't even... They don't know God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They know excitement. They know a good speaker jumping around on the stage. They know good information. They know good teaching. And, and, they, and they follow it, right? And they see where their other kids are going, the other, the other people that are their age, the other people that they could get, you know. And, and, then, they, and, then, and they just kind of go that way. But they don't realize that there's, there's so much more out there to the Christian walk. There's so much out there to life. There, the, you know, the, we, we're going to, I believe that, that, that the Lord's going to help us when, when he's ready to, to, to do this work, to be able to break these things down, to be able to share and, and capture the interest of the younger generations without making them feel like we're shoving something down their throat or we're trying to make them do something that they don't want to do. We have to somehow, and I, we, we, we really need the intercession and pray for your pastors. I don't care who they are. Just pray for them because that's, that's a mandate. But we really need wisdom in order how to reach these people. We really have a heart, and we can't let this die out. 
We want this to reach other generations. We are, we're, and, and Gwen and I is, are, are just, that's our heart. We can't let this go. It is so good that we don't want it, we want it to be able to be shared with people that don't even realize that they can have a relationship with God, that they, when they pray and they read and they can sit at the table with their open Bible, that they can feel like the Lord is sitting right across from them, staring them in the face. I, I was there. This is, this is, we are, we can have that. Amen. We can have that. And, and the thing is, is, is it's just like a, it's like a lost and giant dying generation that looks like church people. They look like church crowds, but they have no relationship with, with the Lord. And it, and it breaks my heart. Um, so I don't know if that's a good enough announcement or not, but we are just going to follow the peace. If there's no peace, we're not doing a thing. We, you know, I'm not going anywhere that God doesn't go. And I'm not going to say anything that God doesn't want me to speak. And, um, and I think that that's, that's basically where we're at. So just, just to, as a heads up that we will have that other option as well as, as coming, uh, coming together on sometime on Sunday afternoons, more, more than likely. Um, just for, you know, Whatever. It's going to be like a, like a service. We don't have the details. But the goal is to reach that, that younger generation. You know, chat, all the logistics are, are just mind-boggling, and, they, and they, they, you know, they trouble me. So I, don't, I know that the Lord's not in it yet. So, but I just wanted to make that announcement. The other thing that I, I wanted to talk about was the mere fact that I, I, I studied all week, and there were certain things that I, I, I really wanted to discuss. And um, pretty much all last night, at the last minute, I was, it was like God didn't want me to do it. So um, in, that, in response to that was that you all need ministry. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what you need as far as specifics. But it's been a long time since we've had some, some altar calls. And... Um, there's a lot of hurt and there's a lot of people out here that really need some, need some touch from the Lord today. So um, we, we, can, we can get in the ministry if you like. Okay. Now Jason, out of all the years I've been in ministry, uh, doesn't vocalize it a lot. Music. By the way, we're going to pray for this young man that does this piano music. Open your spirit and see if you can feel this. Uh, it's, uh, he's offering it to the church free of charge. You know, what do they call that? Public domain. But he says all he wants is prayer that he can get a better piano. He's playing a 20-year-old piano. Young guy. He looks like he's in his 20s. Louder? Do we have that louder? <clears throat> His name's Moses Hilario. Moses Hilario. So we, we give Moses credit. We give Moses credit for this. He's a super sweet guy, young guy from uh, California. We're sending him some books. That's just not a piano. That's an anointing attached to the person playing the piano. And it becomes an extension of their anointing. Keep in 
mind anything that's said spontaneously, it could be for you too when the heart is open. So Father, we just thank you right now. Just receive. Just receive. Just enjoy. Yield. Yield. You're yielding. Right here. You're yielding. I have shame. Come on over here. Just Just stay in his presence. Surrendering and yielding. Surrendering and yielding. Okay, it's increasing over here. I'm going to pray right now for the replaced life. Let's pray Galatians 2.20. Uh, are you willing to do that, to yield in your heart? For it is no longer I that live. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Jesus. Where is that joy bubble coming from? You guys are getting it right there. I can feel joy coming from your spirit. You're connecting and you're ministering. Just receive that joy. There it is. There it is. Jennifer, I can feel your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just release. Release that joy. The joy of the Spirit of God. Shame. There's a cleansing going on, Shane. There's a cleansing that's created me. Created me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit. Oh, I could use a... Hey, Ron, could I have you come up here and help me? For a split second, I thought I was going to lose Chris though. Thank you, Jesus. Does that feel good, Chris? Does that feel good? That's just... Soaking that, you need an emotional healing. <laughs> you know, put your hand down here. That's it. Yeah. Person or situation? Just nod your head. Release, release forgiveness and receive forgiveness. So it changes the peace. There you go. That's it. for activation for this congregation. I keep hearing speakers talk about discernment and discerning of spirits, and they always go, see here, see here, see here. Hey, there's perceive, there's touch. All inner knowings are seeing, hearing, and touching. You've got to have all three develop. Thank you, Lord. Increase. That feels good. That feels good, doesn't it? That's it. Barbie, come on up. You're hurting too. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Increase, increase. Jason, if you see anything in the audience, he goes by discernment, but his discernment is not what's wrong. His discernment pulls out the gold in you. So go ahead. Anybody you just see, just go tell them or call them up. I'm going to stick with the emotional healing. Person or situation. Just nod your head. Okay. Now, let Jesus the forgiver in there. Go to it. And through it. There's a flow. Out of her belly right now, it's flowing. 
an anointing. Now stay there and just drink deep. Drink deep. Heal and surrender. Here's what her spirit's doing right now. She's not doing it physically, but she could. It's going like this. Just enjoy. Well, maybe she is kind of doing it physically. She's not looking at me, but this is what's going on on the inside. Pay attention to the Jesus in you. Okay, Terry. Just let it go. Let it go totally and completely. I release it down from the gut. I release. I release it. Okay. I release. Now, you know, the emphasis is you don't have to discern the way I discern, but you certainly do have to discern yourself. You need to know what's going on inside of you. That's more important than what's going on inside of somebody else. You have an anointing. Oh, there it is. You finally let it go, whatever that was. Let it go. Don't hold on no more. Let it go. Let it go. Right down where your hand is. Just release it. Is there, has there been anyone really struggling with headaches? Has anybody had any issues with uh, um, stroke or fear of stroke? Headaches, let's... Josh and Cassandra. Can you come on up? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just stay in there. Stay in there. Here, I want to show you how important it is to yield, just like Barbie's doing. Yield down here. Fall back into my hand like two, in, there you go. You feel how it changes down in the gut? That's surrender. That's yielding. Now, I don't want you to fall, but I want you to fall back just enough to feel the peace increase. stress here young man right down here yield that's it that's it very good I'm releasing circumstances into the hands of God Thank you. I keep getting a prophetic word for these two but I already gave you that same prophetic word and I'm giving it to you again you're doing it right you're doing it right you're doing it right you're on the right track keep keep your Eyes focused on him. Wait, wait, wait. I want this. There you go. I want the emotional healing here first. Person or situation. Hmm. Just nod your head. Okay. Feel the feeling. Jesus, the feeling. play charismatic Pentecostal games if he takes the pain and changes it to peace that means he's bringing his lordship into it and peace is the internal evidence of his rule 
so he won't put peace on it. It's pieces. It's okay. I'm, I'm in charge of that area now. There might be other areas, but I'm in charge of that area. In Jesus' name. It feels better that this stress is gone. person or situation or you just want more then drink right now drink and heal there you go so you're drawing you're drawing anointing I receive I receive Pray for Galatians 2.20. Slip up your hand. Right where you're at. It is no longer I that lives. And that suggests it's no longer I that love. It's no longer I who forgive. I'm going from me to we. It is God who is at work to will and to perform. Increase. the word you had, Ron? Just hear the Lord say, I am the future. Don't worry about the future. Yeah. That I am the future. Mm -hmm. That's right. There you go. There you go. Write that on the top of his heart. God is your future. You don't have to worry about your future. God is your future. It's a good word, Ron. Hmm? Does that resonate? It seemed like you liked it. Hmm? You like that too? God is your future. You stay with God, the future will take care of itself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Come on up. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I yield to the Lordship of Jesus. I want to enter into that replaced life, a total exchange, a total new dimension of the work of the cross, not just forgiveness and repentance. There's got to be some stress relieved here too. You're hanging on, let go. Now here's how you let go. I want you to fall back into my hand a little bit. Do you feel how it changes here when you do that? It's unnatural to fall backwards. You have to yield your will. Fall backwards a little bit. Now pay attention how it feels. Peace increases. There's a, there's a nice sense of the Spirit all over you right now, Larry. Right now, in Jesus' name, increase, 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 increase. There's a little joy bubble down there. There's a cleansing. You're actually getting some deliverance right now. This is not like television deliverance. This is just where all of a sudden you feel the freedom that's in Jesus and you let go of the cares of the world. You cast all your care upon the Lord. In Jesus' name. There it is. There it is. You got it. You got it. You got it. You feel that peace? That's the Prince of Peace. He himself is your peace. Wow, that's good. That's good. You carry that with you. Chris, same thing. Let me feel your spirit. When I say, let me feel your spirit, you yield. Get out of your head and just yield down there to Jesus in you. There you go. Whoa, you know how to do that. Once you get out of your head, you go there real good. Real good. surrender. What you're doing right now is surrender. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just stay and soak. Stay and soak. I need, from Chris on over, could you come in front of these people? Yes. We just release that impartation. There you go. Whoa. That's yieldedness. That's yieldedness. Yield. Everything good comes by receiving. I receive. 
receive. There you go. You're doing it. You're doing it. Yield. 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 stand behind her. I think we just could lose her, and that's a good way to lose her. Yield. Yield and let go all in, all that is within you down there. Now remember, when I say yield, when I say yield, you don't yield to a man. You're not yielding to me. You're yielding to the Jesus in you. You don't yield to man. You're yielding to the Jesus in you. Larry, keep doing what you're doing. You're, you're still in the anointing. Stay there. The burden's been lifted, right? Do you feel lighter? You feel lighter. Okay, then stay in that anointing. Don't get up in your head. Just stay down and enjoy from the gut. Jane, Stephen, yes. We're going to lose her. you're doing there, that's yielding to the Jesus in you. What you're doing right there. It's the way I taught Jennifer how to function from her spirit and then she didn't need me after this. Once I say there, that's it. You know what you're doing from that point on. Mm. You want to be with the Lord, you're already, let, she let go, stay there though, because mm. I think we're going to lose her any second. She's hanging by a thread. Mm. Oh, give it up, Jane. Let's oh. go. <laughs> Shh. Shh. Oh. Whoa. Now that's good. That, you just went deeper, Stephen. You just went deeper, 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 deeper. Ah. See, we're going to have groups that go deep in God. How do you go deeper in God? You say, you think you're relaxed? I want to go deeper yet and yield and surrender more. You can do that in your chair. I'm yielding and surrendering so much that I could fall right through this chair. I yield to my Jesus in me more and more and more. Betty, just yield, yield. Uh, you're still, yeah, that's yield. I had a delayed reaction there on yielding. as God inspires you, but primarily I want to touch him first. I want to make sure that it's originating from him and not from my intellect. When I feel that peace, then when I open my mouth, I know the source is proper because it's coming from, it's coming from, there's no closed door. Yield. I want you to yield. 
I want you to feel your will. Your will is down in the gut. Fall back into my hand about three inches. Back. Can you feel a change when you do that down in the gut? Okay, now don't fall back and feel that same change. That's yielding and surrendering. There. That's it. That's it. See, the peace just came over you. That's where you get peace. You get peace from the Jesus in you, not up here, in here. It'll flood up here, and it'll guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Increase. Increase. I can feel the peace. Mike, what you're experiencing is the presence of God back there in the back row. Pam and Hal, that's the presence of God. Yeah. Yeah. Gary up front here, you're getting lost in the spirit. Just keep getting lost. Don't get back up in your head. Just stay where you are at. That's it. That's it. Increase. 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 Stephen, the Holy Spirit's all over you. Jana, it's staying the same. You know, you can tell when the Spirit is ruling in your life, it's comfortable to stay. Did you notice nobody hurried up to go sit down? Because that's at this point in time. It's getting stronger right now. Everybody that's up here, just hang on, hang on. Here it comes, here it comes. How many can feel an increase? Nod your head. All right, increase, and I welcome that. Welcome that. Here it comes. Oh, oh, thank you, Lord. There's a little, there's a little shot of joy bubble, Jana. You felt that, right? Nod your head. Yeah, you can feel there's joy coming from your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Increase, increase. Stephen, you've got it. I'm glad you came, Stephen, because this is going to be this is going to be really good for you today. This is going to be your day. I know it's a day the Lord has made, but this is good for you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Josh and Cassandra, you're going to be just fine. You get the same word every time. You're on the right track. You're going in the right direction. Keep doing what you're doing. If you stumble and fall, you don't go into condemnation. You get up, brush yourself off, and move forward again. All right? Walk in the light. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Stephen. Oh, Stephen, God's, God's just, I just see him reaching out to you with both arms. It's just like... He's just calling you upward. And God is basically saying, I'm calling you upward into a union and a communion with me, unlike anything you've known before. And I'm just calling you and I'm calling you. And my hands, I will not withdraw my outreached hands towards you, Stephen. I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Thank you, Lord. Stay there, Abraham, because he's hanging by a thread too. on Brittany, a brand new anointing. God's going to be moving you in the song of the Lord. God's going to begin, he's going to begin to reveal his heart to you in song more and more and more and more in the days ahead. And he's going to cause you to, to uh, flow. It's going to be like on, a, on streets of gold. It's going to be streets of divine nature and it's going to be a flow of divine nature. And it's going to be, uh, I, I just see the notes coming forth out of from the gold stream that's flowing through and it's going to flow through your mind and it's going to be almost like an aroma and it's almost like you're going to be breathing it in you're going to smelling it tasting it and it's going to be notes notes of worship that are coming on a flowing gold divine nature stream and find that river and stay there in Jesus name 
increase, 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 increase. Uh, Victoria, I just hear the Lord say that I'm going to begin to multiply everything that you put your hand to and bring increase. And you're going to see the, uh, repro the reproduction of my anointing is going to be reproduced through you into the lives of many people. And I'm attributing this to the hunger and the thirst to stay on track, to stay moving forward and upward in the things of God. So this is a time of graduation. This is a time of moving closer to Him. And for, for this church, for Kingdom Life Church, I just hear the Lord saying that we're going to begin to come into the place to where as a, as a body, you're going to hunger and thirst for the divine presence more than ever before. You're going to enjoy basking and bathing because God says, I'm going to teach you and here's what's going to happen. Out of the, out of the Holy of Holies, there were three elements in the ark. How many know the three elements that were in the ark? Raise your hand if you even know. Okay. But God is basically saying, I'm going to bring you people into a, a hunger and a thirst to feed on the manna, the hidden manna. And I'm going to, that's, that hidden manna is Jesus himself. And it's going to be feasting upon him in reality, in truth, in spirit and in truth. And as you feast upon that, your rod of authority to build up the church is going to blossom and increase. There's where the blossoming and the increase of the anointing is coming from. It's going to be Aaron's rod that's in there. It's going to be the authority to equip, the authority to reproduce, the authority to build in the name of the Lord. So it's, then the third element is the tablets of the testimony. And God's basically saying, I'm going to reveal the love of the Father. For those commandments were not just given for you. Those commandments were to be an expression of the Father. And it is in Father's house that we have those three elements. And so God says, I'm going to call forth the people who are going to hunger and thirst, who are going to long to feast upon the hidden manna. They're going to search for me with all of their heart. They will find me, says the Lord, when you search for me with all of your heart. Not a casual walk in the park, but a, but a, but a sincere, sincere, passionate desire for more of Him. We're going to feast upon that manna. We're going to be in Father's house and feast upon that manna. And God is going to, in that feasting, going to cause our authority and our anointing to bloom and to come forth. And as that anointing comes forth, it's there to equip you to build up the rest of the body, for you to build up the body of Christ, for you to release that anointing, to encourage, to edify, to comfort, to bring them up. And lastly, to see the Father. For that testimony is who He is. It's not just the Ten Commandments of what we should do, but it reveals this is the way our Father is. This is His character. This is His nature. This is the tablet of testimony. This is His testimony of all that He is and all that He ever was. So, Father, we thank You for this in Jesus' name. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord. We just pray for Vic for increased, increased anointing, increased sensitivity, increase hunger and thirst for the things of God. Increase, increase, increase. More, more, more. Thank you, Lord. I want to pray for Nelsie in Chicago. I want to pray for <clears throat> our, our Thailand girl, Christina, to increase and multiply that, bring the people into another level of experience in the days ahead. I want to pray for <clears throat> our Missouri kid. I want to pray for Oklahoma, for Sundeep and, and uh, Jennifer in Oklahoma, the training and teaching people with the Live Free seminar and moving forward, and they'll be up here in the days ahead. We thank you. I want to pray for Samuel and that work that he's doing in both the political mountain as well as in the church, as well as developing the prophetic amongst the people. We thank you for that in Jesus' name and prepare the ground even in advance before he comes to instill a spirit of prophecy even in this place and increase. Thank you, Lord. If there's anybody 
in the room that you have, you have difficulty feeling his presence, I want you to come up. Anybody has difficulty feeling his presence? If I went just by my discernment, there's nobody that didn't get in, in the spirit. The only thing that can block it is if you have an issue. If you get an issue it, with people, with God, with yourself, it blocks the presence. So let's just pray. Let's pray for the benefit of those watching by Ustream. You're going, well, I'm not there. You can have it right where you're at because Jesus is in you if you're born again. So I pray for those people who are watching by Ustream right now. I just yield and surrender. And I'm feeling the joy of the Lord. Yes, that's Him. And He is with you. And so I want to see, hear, and touch in Jesus' name. I want to do an activation for these that are up here and those of you in your seat and those that are watching by YouTube and Ustream. Here's something, here's the way I trained Jennifer and it worked marvelous because Jennifer was a head person and I wanted to get her down in her heart. So I said, while we're praying right now and I want to do it out here, give me a word as to what you feel. It's that simple because this gets developed, your sensitivity. Barbie? peace that's good and then I would say while we're in that peace now we enter into the, uh, the the two prophetic camps but I start with the touching camp and the presencing and making sure that the source is proper so if I said I felt peace which you can develop nuance peace then I would say what do you see Dennis well I kind of see what I was praying for over Brittany I keep seeing a gold river that's fluid fluid. I see a gold river. It's peace. It's the divine nature. It's strength. It's pure. It's clean. And it's transparent. And I thank you, Lord, for that transparent. What is the scripture? Hmm? I hear the Lord saying that we're not only going to walk on streets of gold, but he's going to create in us vessels of gold vessels of honor, vessels to where the flow of his anointing can follow through. You see, most of the prophetic camps go with seeing and hearing. And I'm saying there's a missing ingredient there. And that is I want to be able to feel his presence. I want to know that I'm in touch with the divine nature. And when I, and even dream interpretation, I may have heard of dream interpretation, you've done that, all right? I found out that it's very important to pick the emotion out of the dream to determine the source instead of just interpreting. I want to know what the source was. I want to know, I mean, I've had revelatory dreams of plane crashes that were perfectly peaceful and landed in tropical waters and I walked out. That was not a negative because the essence of what was taking place was pure God. And God was basically saying, that is one chapter that's done, you're gonna move into another chapter. So you can interpret with the head and miss out on the divine nature or the nature that was attached to your dream. And I say it's the same thing with the prophetic. I wanna know that nature trumps interpretation. And God is gonna bring forth a people who are going to combine the presence of God, but they're going to use the mind of reason, but experience, and then even the consensus of the brethren. And they're going to blend it together until they're walking in a solid theological base in the days ahead. God is going to raise up a solid foundation for the people of God so that they're not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Try this at home, in your prayer time. Even if it's only two minutes, as soon as you feel the presence of God, write down exactly what you feel. Because your vocabulary needs to increase. It needs to go beyond, I feel God. What attribute, what part of his divine nature do you feel? write it down then look for the vision then look for this or the or the scripture and they should match 
If all of a sudden you felt, I, I just feel secure. Well, what do you see? Well, I see the shepherd. Oh, what's the scripture? Oh, though I walk by the valley of a shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You know, he prepares uh, for me green pastures. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack any good thing. You see, you need all three. You don't need two out of the three and then let the reasoning mind fill in the rest. You need to be attached to the divine nature, then use your visual, then have the ear to hear. But the source, the source, the source. You have a discernment. You have an anointing that abides within. No one should need to teach you. But you should know what's going on inside of you. You don't have to have my discernment where you know what's going on inside of somebody else. But by golly, you're going to stand before the Lord for what's going on inside of you. You need to know what's going on inside of you. You're going to stand before the Lord for what's going on inside of you. So Father, from this day forward, I'm going to release an impartation and a quickening for discerning of spirits. You're going to get good at this. You're going to get so good at this. Father, right now, I just release discerning of spirits to Jordan right now. And I release it to this congregation. Stir up the gift of discerning of spirits. Start with me, God. Discern me. Let the Word of God discern. When I'm reading the Word of God, let it discern me. Let it speak to me. Let me feel, see, and hear what that Word is saying to me. Not just go up my intellect and understand it, but let my spirit read it. Let that spirit, let the word read me, in other words. Let me acknowledge it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That was relaxing. How many felt relaxed? How many felt pressured to do some religious act? Nobody. <gasps> We're having revival. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. I think we've minimized the need for ministry and understanding what ministry really is. And I believe he's going to raise up like the sons of Zadok. How many even know who the sons of Zadok were? Anybody? Okay. What did they do? When Israel went astray, they stayed and they ministered to the Lord. And he says, I'm going to raise up from that, from that priesthood those that will say, this is clean, this is unclean. This is holy, this is unholy. And I'm going to teach them and teach my people to discern, make a distinction, differentiate. This is good, this is bad. You have an anointing and it abides within you and it can teach you all things if you will let it. Let's, let's agree to that. Let's consecrate to that. I am welcoming the teacher in me, the Holy Spirit in me, to teach me and guide me into all truth, to discern more fully and more completely in the days ahead. And we praise in Jesus' name. And here's where I'm going to tell you where we're going. Now, this is getting ahead of it. But for all the years we've been in ministry, we've been teaching people to go from the child I speak to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. And we've had to teach the church forgiveness, believe it or not, even though they knew it in their head. Then everything we taught them was Christ in you. And it's like the book of Colossians was our entire ministry. Keep pointing them to Christ in you is the hope of glory. And I would even say, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Where's Jesus? And congregations of a thousand would go like this. There's implied distance that has to be changed in you. And you're going to have to become more God inside minded. That's all there is to it. And you're going to have to think in terms of going to Jesus. The Christ within, the kingdom of God is within you. Now that's Colossians in a nutshell. He kept telling those people before they went backwards or anything, he basically kept telling them, keep your mind on things above. Hmm? Christ in you, the hope of glory, over and over and over again. He's preeminent. Don't add something to Jesus. You don't need to add anything to it. He's preeminent. He's preeminent. But I'm going to tell you what. He was talking about stage two for the most part. 
You know what I mean by stage two? I speak to you, little children. I speak to you, young men. He was taking basically resurrection life. Level one is the forgiveness. Level two is is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives within me. Resurrection life. But the Ephesians was level three. Level three was the ascension life. To where not only is it no longer I that lives, but who is this that comes out of the wilderness like smoke? Jacob's ladder, the cloud of fire and the pillar, heaven and earth, Jacob's ladder, the angels ascending and descending. It's ministering from ascension life from the Holy of Holies. Ephesians, he ministered to that third level. God wants to take you into third level reality. The first, the, the first great awakening, right, Jennifer? Emphasized justification by faith. The forgiven life, right. The second great awakening, sanctification. Holiness, the replaced life. But the awakening that's about to come is going to be ascension life. It's going to be that connection. That connection is like a pillar in a cloud, heaven on earth. It's basically loving not your life unto death. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, but they love not their life unto death. That third level of ascension. It's going to be like the book of Ephesians. We want to enter into that. God, we want to experience that desperately. Uh, op we're opening and receiving by faith those things which have yet to be transpired. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit forgive123.com. Did you know that we have an online school available? Hi, I'm Pastor Jason Clark. We invite you to join our international community of almost a thousand students currently enrolled in a school like no other. Team Embassy equips believers to live in the spirit by giving them the how-to tools for wholeness, intimacy with God, and living the abundant life Jesus promised us. You will learn how to heal emotional pain quickly and completely. You'll discover amazing keys to tap into the fruit of the Spirit and practice the presence of God as a lifestyle. Exciting courses available include the 60-day challenge, self-deliverance, healing rejection, codependency, intimate prayer, the functions of the human spirit, and many, many more. It's formatted so that you could take it with you on all your mobile devices. Sign up today at training.teamembassy.com. Be transformed. Become all God created you to be. You will never be the same.